This video is designed to help caregivers who are trying to help loved ones that have suffered from a traumatic brain injury. Here's eight things that you can do to help them. Preliminarily, people with brain injuries struggle the most with being able to do some of the things that they used to be able to do and being frustrated because they cannot any longer do others. Caregivers also get frustrated for the same reasons and they alternate between, between being overjoyed of the things that a person is making strides being able to do again and then seeing the setbacks that they encounter. And that's kind of the nature of a brain injury, uh, especially mild and moderate ones because it only affects certain areas of the brain. So it makes sense that it would only affect certain aspects of their thinking. So as a caregiver, here are eight things you can do to help a loved one with a brain injury. Most important, because it will get your mind straight on all the others. Don't compare them with how they used to be. Their brain has been forever changed in this regard. And the faster that you accept this, the easier it will be for you to help them. Uh, secondly, don't try to make them be how they used to be. You need to adapt around them. The best example I could think of in this regard is the movie 50 First Dates, the one with Adam Sandler and Drew Barrymore. And if you recall or if you've seen that movie, you'll remember at the end, he does just that. He sets up a way of bringing her faster into every day by showing her videos, doing things the exact same way every day. And although that is a romantic comedy, it is very applicable to real life. And I think when you're dealing with someone that is suffering in this regard, uh, try to keep to routines. Routines are huge for folks with brain injuries. Uh, do things the same way every day. If you take a walk, go the same route. If you do your groceries by going down certain aisles with them, you do those aisles in the same order all the time. Um, importantly, though, is to engage that loved one in their own affairs every day. So um, you don't want to do everything for them thinking that they can't do anything themselves. You want to engage them in what you are doing. So if you're talking about a certain subject, have them repeat the words back to you and um, make sure they repeat names of people that maybe you've discussed. These are all little techniques that can really help a person begin to compensate for their loss. Um, another big aspect is to keep distractions at a minimum. If you are going to engage with that person on a subject matter, make sure there's no music that's playing or TV show that's on. Those things can be a distraction and lead to not only the frustrations of that person and potentially yourself, but also lead to um, their inability to grasp that information and use it in a productive way. Um, now, this is probably one of the hardest things to do, and that is to not be reactive to what's going on. Um, you want to understand that these folks suffer from a lot more than just memory issues. Um, the, and those issues change over time. You know, it's kind of like raising a child. You know, you, you figure out one thing that, that's going on with them, and, and then they're on to something else. So they're kind of a moving target. So it's really important to understand that all kinds of other changes can occur, things like personality changes, emotional changes, psychological changes, and that once you get acclimated to those, that they can change in and of themselves just due to external factors like aging, things like that. So, you know, ordinarily when we're dealing with someone, we've been taught our whole life to kind of make light of it, maybe tease them, maybe make a joke or whatever. That's kind of a, a really difficult thing with folks with brain injuries. You want to be very careful not to criticize or judge or tease or anything because these folks that are, that are having these abnormal behaviors or abnormal thought processes, it's very frustrating for them. And um, you'll have to almost retrain yourself uh, which will be a little bit difficult at first, but I'm pretty sure that you'll adapt and get better with that over time. Patience is a virtue. We've all heard that. So be patient. You know, loved ones uh, may ask the same questions over and over again, five or ten times. Um, it's normal to get frustrated or impatient that you've already told them that. But um, I find that one of the best ways of handling this is to just treat it as though it were the first question every single time. I think that will reassure them, not make them feel like a lesser person because you know this is the sixth time they've told you. And I think it will make uh, for reduced stress in, in the household. Um, now today we're we're very fortunate. You know we have smartphones, we have tablets, we have app stores. 
These are very, very effective tools to use and employ for your loved ones that are affected by a brain injury. There are all sorts of brain games and apps that you can download, and that can be used very effectively as a compensatory measure or to compensate for the issues that they're having. And probably one of the biggest assets with a smartphone or a tablet is the fact that they have calendars, they have task lists by day, they have um, alerts. So pe many people with traumatic brain injuries they tend to remember things for a short amount of time and then it's kind of gone. So if you can help them get into the habit of using that smartphone or tablet to record and alert themselves to do things, uh, you'll find over time, I believe, that they will begin to become a little bit more autonomous in their behavior, rely on you less, and that's good for everyone. Any strides that they can make with your help is always uh, a definite asset. Uh, if you'd like to know more about taking care of a loved one with a brain injury, download my free cheat sheet, Life After a Brain Injury, How to Tackle Medical Bills, Safety, Personality Changes, and Regaining Independence. I also to invite you to join my Facebook group, the NOLA Brain Injury Support and Resources Group, and the link to that will be included in the cheat sheet, uh, which I provided below. So to download the cheat sheet, Download the link below, uh, click on that, and you'll get everything you need. Thank you so much.